First of all, again, I wish to thank you all for being here, and I wish to thank Immunobiotech for sponsoring this conference. In my opinion, it is the most honorable thing to do for a new, young and dynamic company as Immunobiotech, not only to produce the extremely high quality product they are producing in CIMA, but also to sponsor basic and applied science. Today, my talk uh, will be focused uh, on the immunotherapy, which is related <coughs> to GCMAP and much, much more. And I guess tomorrow I also have another speech so we can uh, go in depth into some of the details that I will mention today. In modern times, uh, the word immunotherapy was uh, first mentioned in 1971 in a paper published in Science uh, and now there are 56,000, more than 56,000 papers published on this subject. You can see that there is an exponential growth of papers published in this subject, and the papers published on GCMAP, of course, belong to this growth. The first paper on this specific molecule, GCMAP, was published about 20 years ago in 1994 in this paper that the where you will recognize one of the fathers of GC Map, who is Professor Nobuto Yamamoto from Philadelphia. Now, 20 years have passed, <coughs> and there are tens of papers published in the National Library of Medicine of the United States. It's difficult to count them all because almost on a monthly basis a new paper comes out. And uh, the effects in vitro and in vivo are described and there are hundreds of presentations at international congresses that describe the effects in a variety of experimental systems and in several pathologic conditions. I shall not go into the details of how GCMAP is produced during the immune response and how Nagalase, this enzyme, destroys its precursor as uh, Mr. Knopf has brilliantly stated before. But we can do this uh, if you wish, but I guess that uh, you all know these uh, details. I will go into much more sophisticated details later on. For example, Mr. Knox was mentioned in Congresses. This uh, Congress will be held in Milan at the end of August, and one of our papers has been accepted for presentation, again describing the multifaceted immunotherapeutic effects of GCMAP. Now, at this conference, uh, you will hear doctors report on the effects of GCMAP in patients with a variety of diseases ranging from cancer to immune disorders to chronic fatigue syndrome and many other diseases. And scientists, including my colleagues, will describe the effects in human cancer cells, human neurons, cardiac function. So you will hear many different effects attributed to this molecule then a question, of course, has to arise spontaneously. Is this magic? Is it a hoax? How is it possible that one molecule could be affected in such a variety of different diseases? We can include among these different diseases uh, neurological diseases, not only chronic fatigue syndrome, but also Parkinson and Alzheimer, rheumatic sclerosis. We can include chronic kidney disease. This is a review paper that we publish on GC and chronic kidney disease. Dr. Bradstreet will show you the excellent results obtained with autism. And also we have results that describe the positive effect of GC in environmental pollution. So how is it possible that a single molecule does this and so many things? Well, it is possible is not unique, is not new. The answer comes from an old observation and also from our most recent results at the molecular level. The old observation actually was uh, seen here in this country, in Germany, and refers to the so-called Allgemeine Pathologie, that means general pathology, a concept 100 years old that states, and it is true, that all chronic diseases, regardless of the etiology or initial cause, share common, general, features that in turn are responsible for the progression of the disease if untreated. And this concept, old, 100 years old, 
is at the basis of the innovative integrated immunotherapy, immunotherapeutical approach described in this conference. <coughs> As a matter of fact, now it is in the textbooks, the chronic pathological conditions, and we also know now environmental pollution, they do have different unrelated initial causes, could be viral, could be autoimmune, could be mutations, but they eventually develop the same general algemeine features that become at some point independent of the initial cause and lead to the progression of infant treatment. This is a paper that we published together with my colleagues who are here in the room on the effects of cadmium, which is a heavy metal environmental pollutant, and how does GCMAF reverse the effects of cadmium. Now, going back to the textbooks, which are the common pathological features underlying the chronic conditions. Essentially, therefore, a dysfunction of the immune system, systemic and local, mostly in the brain, inflammation, dysregulated metabolism of nutrients, dysregulated angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels. These are four papers of ours that we published between 2011 and 2012, describing these features in different conditions. All these papers have been published, of course, uh, in peer-reviewed journals uh, listed uh, in the National Library of Medicine. Now, we now know that GCMA is part of a complex uh, biochemical mechanism which is called the vitamin D axis. <coughs> you can go to Wikipedia and have a quick look uh, at what the vitamin D axis is. And we have recently discovered that most of its actions are mediated through its interaction with a vitamin D receptor, or BDR, a molecule that we have been studying for the past 20 years. It's about 20 years that we're studying, we've published papers for the past 20 years on this vitamin D axis to which GCMAP belongs and on this receptor. And very, very recently, in the past two or three months, we elucidated the molecular mechanism of action that is uh, responsible for such a variety of effects. Now, uh, I will go into some molecular details. The results that I'm about to show you now are unpublished as yet. Actually, they have been submitted for publication to a journal. We don't know the answer as yet. They are very molecular, so I hope they are not too boring. I try to do my best to make them as less boring as possible. Uh, so this is a molecular model that we made in our laboratory. This <coughs> molecule here is GCMAF. This is the plane of the plasma membrane. So here we are outside of the cell, and here we are inside the cell in the cytoplasm. We discovered that GCMAF and VDR, VDR stands for vitamin D receptor, they share a common sequence of 23 hydrophobic amino acids, most of them are exactly the same, so we're talking about identity. And this is the mode of interaction between the two molecules. This yellow stuff here is vitamin D. Vitamin D is a sandwich in between the two proteins on both sides of the membrane. This underlines the importance of vitamin D in itself in determining the responses to GCMAP. If there isn't enough vitamin, C, vitamin D at the molecular level, at the cellular level, GCMAP has a hard time in interacting with its receptor. Then over here, in this shallow cleft of the molecule, you see oleic acid. Oleic acid is made by olive oil and other sources. This molecule is bound to GCMAP and it participates in the hydrophobic interaction at the level of the plasma membrane. Then the entire complex enters the cells and keeps on signaling. We also elaborated another molecular interaction which we call alternative interaction. Uh, can I, I have the next slide? I don't know why it doesn't work uh, with the point. Yes, this is. Okay, so this is the alternative mode of interaction. Here we are inside the cell. This is vitamin D on both molecules. This is oleic acid 
participating in the hydrophobic interaction between this 88 hydrophobic amino acids of GCMAP and these 23 hydrophobic amino acids of the VDR. So these, uh, uh, these figures uh, give you the idea how does GCMAP interact with the vitamin D receptor. May I have the next slide? I think it's easier if you give me the next slide. Fuck, are you keep moving again? Now, this is the interaction between the famous uh, N-acetylgalactosamine, which is the target of the enzyme that destroys the precursor of GCMAP, at, C at 3 and 420, with a stretch of acidic amino acids on the VDR. So all these are the molecular intellect interactions that explain the effects of GCMAP at the cellular and molecular level. May I have the next slide, please? In fact, by interacting with the vitamin D receptor, GCMAP modifies the expression of a number of genes in cells that express the VDR. And therefore, it elicits a series of responses that go well beyond its capability of activating macrophages. This is a list that is destined to grow, to grow of the proteins and gene products that interact with the VDR. If you take only the first one, that one, you will discover that it is a gene that is involved in neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, and also it interacts with growth factors and it prevents the apoptosis, which is the death of cells. And all the other cells, they have a role, for example, RAMX1, it has a role in brain development, and therefore it could have a role in autism. So this explains why GCMAP has so many effects, because it interacts with the receptor that in turn switched on and off several genes that have profound effects on many cell functions. This uh, almost unreadable chart is taken from the National Library of Medicine. It tells you all the cells and all the tissues <coughs> that express the vitamin D receptor and these are the cells that will be influenced by GCMAP, the cells and the tissues, and therefore the possible applications of GCMAP every time that one of these functions of these cells is a somehow deranged. You can see that monocytes or macrophages, they express high levels of the vitamin D receptor. That's why it is called macrophage activating factor, because the macrophages are one of the most visible targets of GCMAP, but as long as we keep on doing research, we see many more effects in many more tissues and cells, both normal cancerous and with other disease and with other alterations. Now, of these many effects, today I shall focus on three that have little to do with its capability to stimulate macrophages for the very simple <coughs> reason of my colleagues, Dr. Smith, who is helping me with the projection, we <coughs> show you the effects on macrophages. So I shall focus on the ability of GCMAP to act directly on cancer cells, and in particular on human breast cancer cells, reverting their neoplastic phenotype. To make it simple, cancer cells become normal. Then I shall focus on the ability of GCMAP to inhibit the angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels induced by human breast cancer cells. And finally, you may wonder why there is an ultrasound eco machine down at the, uh, on the wall at the end of the, of the room. And it is to demonstrate, maybe later on or maybe tomorrow, the rapid systemic responses in terms of a henotropic effect on the heart that can monitor the response, the individual responses to GCMAP. Now, I don't know how well do you see these slides. These are cancer cells, human breast cancer cells in culture. In the top figure, you see cells growing as they usually do, one on top of the other. They do not respect limits. They do not feel the so-called contact inhibition. They are not adherent to the cell plane, so this gives them the ability to metastatize. In the lower panel, you see the same identical culture after 72 hours 
of GC map stimulation of 40 nanograms. Of course, we have a, a concentration curves and time boxes. <coughs> And uh, I don't know if you can appreciate them. Their shape and morphology is completely different. Uh, now they become uh, regular, uniform, polygonal, as they are supposed to be. They don't grow one on top of the other. You don't see these mountains, these clusters, as we call them. They are adherent. In other words, this uh, is a typical normal cell morphology and behavior. And that's after 72 hours of GCMAP stimulation without any macrophages, nothing. Simply direct action of GCMAP on those cells. In the next slide, you will see another parameter of neoplastic uh, progression. It is the so-called <coughs> epithelial mesenchymal transition, something that is published in uh, 2007. We know that when cancer cells progress toward a more malignant phenotype, they change their cytoskeletal structure and they change from a keratin-rich, as it is supposed to be in normal cells, to a bimentin-rich network in this process. So these are cancer cells untreated. This is the immunohistochemistry, where you uh, stain the bimentin, so you can look for bimentin expression. So you see that the cells are dark brown. This means that they are expressing a lot of this protein bimentin. This means that they are very malignant. Then, after 72 hours of treatment with GCMAP, you see much, much less stain, indicating that the gene coding for bimentin has been shut down in that process of gene regulation that I show you at the molecular level just a few slides ago. Without vitamin D? Without vitamin D? In this case, vitamin D is present in the medium. It's part of the cultural medium. Mm -hmm. Then I am showing you now the coronal antoid cheek embryo membrane assay. This is a typical standard assay to measure neoangiogenesis. When tumor grow, they induce the formation of new blood vessels that infiltrate the tumor to provide blood, energy, nutrients, and also favor metastatization, new blood vessels. This is a process mediated by series of factors including PGE, prostaglandin E1, vascular endothelial growth factor, and actually angiogenesis is one of the targets of cancer therapy because it's such an important process. 